Hello, my name is Dr. Charles Cobbs. I'm the director of the Ben and Catherine Ivey Center for Advanced Brain Tumor Treatment here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, for braincancer.org, we do some uh, lessons about different types of brain tumors, and today I wanted to talk about meningiomas. So, if you look at all quote unquote brain tumors, meningiomas are actually the majority of primary brain tumors. Really, if you look at all the tumors that go to the brain, the vast majority are metastatic tumors from other cancers, but when we're talking about tumors in the skull, really, uh, meningiomas are the most common. And why are, what are meningiomas? Well, meningiomas are usually benign tumors that derive from cells that are associated with the dura. So what is that? Well, let's just take a uh, example. I'll draw a picture of uh, the head, uh, the skull, and uh, this, this would be the nose over here, the mouth, etc. And then um, inside the skull, you have, um, well, let's do the skull. The skull is here in blue. And and anywhere there is skull, there is a surrounding uh, membrane called dura. And so there are different compartments of the brain, and basically the dura is adherent like a leather membrane to the skull, all the way around the contents of the skull. There are actually areas where the dura kind of folds in, like here where there's a separation for the cerebellum. And then the actual, the dura actually goes all the way down to the very bottom of the spine, in the spinal cord. <clears throat> so anywhere there is dura, you can have a meningioma. Typically, we uh, see meningiomas often in association with the brain, and that's because the brain is enveloped by dura, and then there's like, in the middle of the brain, there's a part of the dura that comes in like that, called the falx and there's this tentorial dura, so anywhere along here or the skull base you can get a meningioma. Meningiomas are actually thought to derive from cells, not exactly from the dura, but from the arachnoid, which is a, um, it's another membrane sort of stuck to the dura. In any event, we do know that meningiomas can grow virtually anywhere the dura is, and they typically grow in a pattern that is, I guess, um, sort of linear. They just, you know, can grow slowly over years. So if you start out, and this is year zero, let's say you're a 50-year-old person and you have a meningioma that starts at age 50, it could grow in a linear type of fashion, a couple of millimeters every year. And by the time you're 65, you may have a meningioma that is that big around. Sometimes they can get huge if they grow in areas of the brain that are not sensitive to pressure in terms of causing a neurological deficit. For instance, there are some meningiomas that can occur in the frontal lobes causing massive brain compression and get literally as big as a baseball or softball. And these compress the frontal lobes. Sometimes they involve the olfactory nerves so people lose their sense of smell and they get uh, slowly uh, symptoms of dementia, which you can see with these huge tumors. More and more frequently in the United States, what happens is someone will have a car accident or a headache and get a CAT scan, and they will find a meningioma on the scan. Um, women have a higher frequency of meningiomas because they, the meningiomas seem to be influenced by estrogen, and estrogen may allow them to grow more, fat, more rapidly. So let's say you are a 50-year-old female and you have a headache and you get a, a CT scan and they see that you've got a little meningioma somewhere on your brain or adjacent to your brain. Well, um, the way I think about meningiomas is essentially, um, and I'll abbreviate it, meningioma is sort of a, a, a tree of how you want to deal with it. So let's say you have a meningioma that's found. Number one, is it incidental? 
or is it causing symptoms? And the symptoms may, due to, may be due to pressure on the brain, swelling associated with meningioma, seizures, anything like that. If it's an incidental meningioma, is it large? And is it in a young person, which suggests it's gonna continue growing? Or is it small, you know, less than the size of a, a, a dime? And especially if it's got evidence of calcification or bone formation, it could have been there for 50 years. And in these small incidental meningiomas, I like to watch them and just get an MRI maybe six months, a year later. And if it's not growing, you can do nothing. But if it's growing, you can decide whether to do nothing or else take it out. If it's large and it's in a young person, or even if it's in an older person, it might make sense to take it out. Now we know that meningiomas that, that grow basically from the base of the brain to the top of the head are a little more aggressive, so that feeds into our uh, thinking. The ones down here at the skull base are often much more difficult to operate on. Um, they can cause pr pressure on the brain stem, um, but uh, even though they're typically more slow growing, we will often operate on those as well. So surgery uh, is often what we do when we find a large meningioma, unless it's somebody in their 80s or 90s and, and it's just not worth it. Um, another possible option for small meningiomas or large meningiomas, depending on where they are, is radiosurgery. So radiosurgery sounds like something to do with surgery. It has nothing to do with surgery. Radio surgery essentially is just delivery of radiation. So let's say this is your head. Um, sorry, that's a bad picture. Here, often you'll see meningiomas that grow right behind the uh, area of the eyes and may have be small or in an area called the cavernous sinus. It's really difficult to, where they're difficult to remove. In this case, you could treat this with gamma knife. Gamma knife is basically where you put your head into a big um, igloo-shaped device that has, I believe, around 200 cobalt-60 radiation sources, and they all beam down at the one spot. And so that one spot gets a lot of radiation, and the rest of the brain around it doesn't, so you can essentially zap that one spot in the middle, and there's about a 95% cure rate with radiosurgery with a gamma knife. Another type of device is either a uh, LINAC based or a cyber knife, which are basically, instead of having a, a solid device where the head is moved to the center, basically you lie flat and then the device goes around and shoots these different uh, radiation beams, accomplishing the same thing more or less, zapping the thing that you're focusing on. So um, meningioma surgeries can be difficult, sometimes these tumors uh, are acquiring blood vessels from the outside and they get very vascular and occasionally uh, will need to be treated with a procedure called embolization. Basically, you go in through the groin and you pass a catheter up into the blood vessel and squirt glue into the blood vessels to shut down the blood vessels right before surgery so when you take the tumor out it won't be that bloody. I do a lot of uh, meningioma surgeries myself and usually the goal is to try to get all of the meningioma out. Although occasionally I do uh, have done cases where the tumor may be stuck to an important vein. For instance, this vein up here is called the superior sagittal sinus. And often they'll be stuck in this vein and you don't wanna go in to damage that vein because it can cause a serious life-threatening problem. And if you leave a little tumor there, you can either watch it or else treat it again with radiosurgery. About 5% of meningiomas will be so-called atypical or aggressive or malignant meningiomas. And these, instead of growing like this over a 15-year period, they might grow more at a rate like that. So we, we can tell which ones are more aggressive because we look at them under the microscope. And if there are a thousand cells here, we can put a little thing on there that 
it tells us how many of those cells are dividing. And if you get a, over a rate of about 15% cell division, that suggests that these guys are really more aggressive. And there are other features the pathologist looks at. For these tumors, even if you get a complete resection, you're going to want to treat that area with radiation to prevent it from coming back. Um, and finally, I'll just say that meningiomas, as I mentioned, can go occur anywhere there is dura. Often we'll get slow growing tumors that arise in the spinal canal and cause compression of the spinal cord, and people will present with you know, weakness in their arms and legs. And so we'll go in and take these out anywhere from up at the top of the neck down to the low back. Um, but um, the good thing is that most of the time, 95% of the time, meningiomas can be removed uh, and cured, uh, especially if there's a complete resection. And if not, usually they can be managed with radiation, either stereotactic radiosurgery or just old fashioned radiation given over um, multiple fractions over several weeks. Um, so that's pretty much the story of meningiomas. And uh, the good news is that when I see a lot of people that come in with a quote brain tumor that's an incidental meningioma and it's tiny, I tell them don't worry about it. It's probably not even growing. We'll just keep an eye on it and um, it puts their fears to, to rest. Thank you very much.